What's going on? It's Big Dog Bark and the country boy from Memphis, Tennessee. And let me welcome y'all back to Sports Zone TV, where we talk about relationships and sports and everything in between. And man, let me say something to uh, all y'all Deion Sanders bandwagon members, you know what I'm saying? So, I just got through watching ESPN not too long ago. And I saw this article last night. I didn't know if I wanted to do something about this article I read about Deion Sanders and what's going on with the reporter, the uh, the media member in Colorado and they look back and forth or whatever the case may be. But I saw the article before ESPN said something about it. So I'm watching ESPN, I'm watching Get Up, and they're talking about it. And they making the point about, you know, oh boy is a martyr now. Because Dion, instead of Dion just, you know, not answering questions, not bringing up his name, Dion Sanders actually brought this man's name up and said he ain't going to do no interviews, he ain't going to answer no questions, whatever the case may be with bruh. But instead of just keeping your mouth closed and not say nothing, not bring this man's name up, you bring this man's name up, and now everybody going to want to know who this dude that Dion Sanders talking about. And apparently the dude, the reporter, whatever, the media member, was well, sitting up there talking about Dion is full of crap, full of BS. You know what I'm saying? Now, for all those that ain't never coached a game in their life, let me tell y'all what this was. Dion first year in Colorado. For those that want to forget about that four and eight season, let me hear the remind. I'm here to remind y'all. Dion first year in Colorado, four and eight. Every home game, he got rappers, actors, entertainers. He got everybody coming to these games. Were they on the sideline? Were they in the press box? Whatever the case may be. A lot of, ugh, a lot of show. But on the field, what was the substance? You went 4-8. and eight. In the four games you won, I think one of them, you beat them folks convincingly. But the other three, it's like, yeah, you could have lost them games. So you could have easily been one and uh one and eleven, but you end up four and eight. You know what I'm saying? Which is a better record than the previous year when they went one and eleven. Okay, cool, whatever. So between the shows, the sideline show, people in the stands, you know what I'm saying? You did a lot of wonderful things in Colorado. You, you bringing in the bid, you bringing in revenue, and all that right there. Cool, gotcha. But you're not winning. You're not winning. All the side show antics, everything like that, that's cool for those that just want to be entertained with rappers and wrestlers and actors. That's cool if you want to be entertained. But what Dion getting paid for is the product he put on the field. It wasn't a good product. Yeah, your son might be a top 10 quarterback. I'm sure he's going first round because everybody likes your door. You know what I'm saying? Your other son, he's going to be good. In the NFL, Travis Hunter, he's going to be a first-round pick. Got you, bro. Got you. But you went 4-8. and eight. You getting paid for the product you put on the field. Because in Jackson State, you got paid for the product you put on the field. Even though you didn't get paid a lot. Even though you went through whatever you went through in Jackson State University. You know what I'm saying? You put a product on the field that won a championship. Won a conference championship. So now the eyes are on you in Colorado. In Boulder, Colorado. The eyes on you. And your first season didn't go as you thought it was going to go. You went 4-8. I sit there and say, well, season two, get six. Be bowl eligible. You know what I'm saying? I would look at that as growth. But if you have another 4-8 season or a 5-7 and seven season, hey, bro, you're going to be on the hot seat. Now, the whole back and forth between him and the reporter it's basically what we see now with the campaign between Kamala and, and Trump. Because Dion, he wasn't questioning. He, he didn't disrespect Dion Sanders as a man. He didn't disrespect him as a Hall of Fame corner. He didn't dis disrespect him as a father, as a, as a husband or nothing like that. No, 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 no. He brought his coaching into question. Your record. Why you got so many players coming in and saying this, that, and the third? It's like you real hypocritical because you'll say one thing and you'll do something else. That what he brought into question is your whole coaching style, your your philosophies and everything right there. Like if you're so good at what you're preaching, why you had a 4 one a season? They just keep it 100. It ain't got nothing to do with who he is as a man. It got everything to do with his performance.
And see, that's the same thing that we say about Kamala Harris and Trump. It's like, wow, people are trying to come at Trump about who he is. What's your performance? What's your record? And so as soon as old boy bring up his record, he say he the, the this, that, and the third, just, just insulting him about his record as a coach and what he does as a coach. ESPN is sitting up here saying, oh, he's making personal shots because they feel like because he called him a false prophet. That's attacking his religion. Man, if you ever been in that first chair, you ever been on them sidelines coaching and all that right there, J. Cole, salute to J. Cole for bringing out the false prophet. John. Hey, bro, if you saying one thing and you're not doing what you say you're going to do and you want me to come and drink the Kool-Aid, Bruh, you're a false prophet. So if you're constantly promoting certain things to these five, four, three-star players to come play for you, whether from high school or a transfer, and you telling them this, that, and the third, and when they get there, everything you told them ain't the same, you're a false prophet. It has nothing to do with your religion. It has everything with your sales pitch. He said, everything you told me as a player, what you're going to do for me. And when I get there, you're not doing nothing you said you're going to do for me. To a four and eight season, you had a lot of, you had a lot of flair. You had no substance. Now, me for one, I want to see Deion Sanders succeed as a coach. I want to see what he can do with Colorado in, in year two. You know what I'm saying? You went and got one self to help your defensive line because y'all couldn't stop the run. <laughs> I heard Ed Reed been in and out the uh, uh, the coaching staff or whatever the case may be. We're going to see what them DB looking like. That wasn't even the problem. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see. But all I know is this right here. This is, a, this is a perfect example of when people get upset when they call you out your performance. This is a perfect example when people call out your performance, you want to make it personal. No, no, I ain't got nothing personal against you. You a Hall of Fame NFL player, great father, great man. That's not in question. And I remember I was getting hate from play from people when I said Colorado was gonna lose to Oregon and when they lost. There was so many people on my head talking about I'm going against the ground. I'm like, nah, I watch football. I play football. I coach football. I knew they were gonna lose. For all those that didn't understand the game, I said they gonna lose. What y'all going to do when they lose? And they lost their game against Oregon. Everybody was like, man, you a hater, you a hater, you a hater. Like, I don't care about Colorado like that. I don't root for Colorado every Saturday, every Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't root for Colorado. Do I want Dion to be successful? Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, man, you're not going to catch me slipping, running and jumping for Colorado because he there. And you got all these people on the sidelines and did that in the third. Like, bro, you still got to play the game. You still got to play the game. And if the game ain't winning, the game ain't winning. I can judge you then because, like, you ain't producing. But this year, too, we going to see. But like I said, this all points back. This all goes back to when I bring your performers in the question, you're going to make it personal. That's why we have a lot of problems with racism and all that right there because your performance is is pathetic in some of these cases you can't perform you're not who you say you are as far as this job you're doing you're not that person but instead of you looking at it from that professional standpoint you want to make everything personal to say oh they hating on me oh they don't like me because i'm a woman or they don't like me because i'm a man they don't like me because i'm this skin color they don't like me because i'm a, of this sexuality no 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 I don't care about none of that. It is what it is. I don't care about none of that. I put you in a job. And if you can't perform in this job, it's because you can't perform in this job. It ain't got nothing to do with your skin color. It ain't got nothing to do with your gender. It ain't got nothing to do with your religious background, your political background. It ain't got nothing to do with that. You suck at the position. So, I'm going to wrap all this up by saying this. Dion. Year two, go to a bowl game. Win at least seven games, six, seven games. Get bowl eligible. Do your thing. I want to see you uh, be successful. Trust me, I do. 
But if you have another four and eight or five and seven season, you don't make no bowl and all that, you're gonna be on the hot seat. It ain't got nothing to do with your religious background. It ain't got nothing to do with your skin color. It ain't got nothing to do with none of that. It's going to be everything based solely off your performance as a coach. The competition you playing in the Big 12. That's what it's going to boil down to. It ain't going to boil down to nothing else. If you can't perform, you can't perform. It is what it is. But anyway, this Big Dog Bargain from Memphis, Tennessee. This sports on TV. Hey, subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And I'm going to get up with you when I get up with you. Holla at you.